Hi, welcome to my channel, The Whining Housewife. My name is Beth Stanley, and welcome to my garden. We're gonna be doing all kinds of things, from gardening, to cooking, to shopping for antiques. You're just gonna join me on the adventures of my retired life. I can't wait. So if you like what you hear, and you're excited to join me, hit the like button down below, and subscribe to my channel. I'm really excited to have you join me on my adventures here to come. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Hey, good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite thing to go with mine, and that is cheese. We're going to be making my famous cheese board, famous to my family anyway, and we're going to be talking about the cheese selections. We're going to be talking about the accoutrement that go with it. I can't wait. So come on, let's get started. So one of the things that you want on a cheese board is a variety of cheeses for a variety of different tastes. I have a few selections that I'm going to talk about, and then we'll get started making our cheese tray. This first one is from the Snowdonia Cheese Company. It is called Amber Mist. Um, I love the Snowdonia Cheese Company. There's actually two of their cheeses on our cheese board today. This particular one is a cheddar with a whiskey infusion and it is one of our absolute favorites. When I put this on a cheese board, everybody goes crazy. So also from the Snowdonia Cheese Company is this Red Devil, and my this is my husband's absolute favorite. It is a sharp cheddar cheese infused with chili pepper. It's nice and spicy, gives that little kick at the back of your, your throat when you're, when you're trying it. It's really amazing. So both of these from the Snowdonia Cheese Company um, are, are standard picks on my cheese trays. So the next one is a Mauve cheese, and this is one of my favorites, partly because it's sentimental and we had it at our wedding, and partly because it is just an amazing cheese. It is two different types of goat cheese. You've got a mild goat cheese over here, and then you've got an aged goat cheese on this side. And going down the middle is a line of grape ash. Now I know that doesn't sound delicious, but it is absolutely amazing. The smokiness of the grape ash just really, really, really pairs well with the goat cheese flavor. So this is one of my very favorite cheeses as well, Mobe. And this is from the Car Valley Cheese Company. So I also love this cheese. This is a Manchego cheese and it's basically, uh, the best way to describe it is a Spanish version of Asiago. It's a nice, nice aged cheese. It's delicious. Uh, just because I've said every other company, this is from the El Cortijo um, Cheese Company. It's a Spanish company. And Manchego is one of my very favorites right up there with Asiago and all of those other aged cheeses. Delicious cheese and great if you're looking for a variety on a cheese platter. So talking about all the accoutrements or all the other things that go with cheese, I wanna talk about um, the flavors that you want on your cheese plate. So you're gonna want salty, you're gonna want sweet, you're going to want um, something crunchy if you have it, but you want a variety of different things. And one of the things I don't usually do is put crackers on my cheese board because, well, keto, and also um, because it just kind of plays down the flavor of the cheeses and I don't particularly care for it. Uh, but the things that I do wanna talk about are a little bit of cured meat. So this is Soprasetta. It is um, a very highly flavored sausage, uh, nice and fatty, beautifully cured, little spicy, goes great with all kinds of cheeses. The other thing that I like to put on my cheese trays are olives. Uh, I have a variety of olives here from Ingalls. You have a variety of olives for a variety of tastes. My husband hates green olives. I happen to love them. So we've got black olives, we've got green olives, um, just a variety for everyone to really enjoy. And then the last thing I have are these Pepidou peppers. They are a little bit sweet and then a little spicy kick right at the end. I love these and one of the ways, I love them plain, but one of the ways I also love them is stuffed with feta cheese with a little bit of balsamic reduction over the top of them, but we'll do that one later. Today we're just gonna put them on our cheese tray and enjoy their flavor very simply.
So I'm not the best at knife skills, but I do know that there are certain ways to cut cheese uh, that really bring out the flavor in cheese. With the cheddar, I just sliced it into triangles and it's so such a good cheddar that it's going to naturally crumble. In fact, one of the ways that you can tell a really good aged cheddar is if it does crumble, you want that. Um, so both of these are gonna crumble a little bit. As far as the mobe goes, you wanna cut the mobe so that you cut it across both types of cheese. So each piece has both types of cheese in it so that you can appreciate both those tastes. And with the manchego, it has a rind on it. Now I love this rind, it just adds a little bit of flavor. So I cut this in nice thin strips. It's a really aged cheese, so it's kind of a strong flavor. Cut it in nice thin strips so they can enjoy the flavor, but it's not overpowering. I have my olives, my pepper peppers, and of course my soap for setup. All ready and set up to go with a nice glass of wine. Hope you enjoyed. To accompany our cheese board, I'm going to make the perfect wine cocktail for a nice sunny spring day, sangria. It's my recipe for sangria, and I'm gonna show you how I kind of cheat a little bit to make it taste perfect. We're gonna start with either sweet red wine, or I cheat and I actually use sangria. This is um, real sangria by the Cruz Garcia Company, and it's my favorite. So that whole bottle is going to go in. The whole thing. Adding to this, I'm going to amp up the flavor of the sangria a little bit by adding some brandy. Now you don't wanna to add too much brandy because then you get a heavier cocktail and you want something that is light and refreshing. So we're only gonna pour the brandy for two counts. Ready? One, two. Adding to the brandy, we're going to put in a can of lemon lime, lime soda. I have Sprite and this is zero sugar um, and it actually has a touch of ginger in it, which we have really found we like a lot, but it can be any lemon lime soda. So one whole can is gonna go in. After the can of soda, you're going to add a little bit of orange juice. And I'm trying to open it with one hand, but that's not working. So let me use both. You're going to add about a cup of orange juice. So maybe a little more, maybe a little less. That looks pretty good. And because it is such a sunny spring day outside and you want this to be refreshing, but not watered down, I always use frozen fruit in my sangria. That way it cools the sangria down and it's a nice ice cold beverage, but you're not having to deal with it being watered down. I like to use the antioxidant fruit blend because it has cherries and blackberries and blueberries and it's just a really good blend for this particular sangria. So that goes in. And it splashes everywhere. Give it a quick stir. And it's just that easy. Serve it up. So let's take our cheese tray and our sangria and let's go out to the porch for cocktail hour, which in retired life starts at four o'clock. Look at this beautiful day in North Georgia. Beautiful weather, the birds are singing. We're out on the porch for cocktail hour. Thank you for joining us on the video today. If you like my video, hit the like button below and I'll see you next time. Bye.